that evil lurks in the hearts of men. <laughs> the shadow knows. gentlemen, the shadow's exciting adventure starts in a moment. But right now, motorists, I have the biggest, the most exciting news you've heard since the days of the first pneumatic tire. It's all about the tire sensation of 1938. The new Goodrich Safety Silvertown with the amazing lightsaber tread. This new kind of tire is utterly different in appearance, design, and action than anything you've ever seen or felt. At the first sign of a skid, it turns the wet road under your car into a dry track and stops you quicker safer than you've ever stopped before. Hard to believe? Just listen to this startling proof. An exhaustive road test made by the largest independent testing laboratory in the country against regular and premium priced tires of America's six largest tire manufacturers, no tire tested, regardless of price, came up to this new tire in non-skid action. These severe tests, made over a three-month period, also proved that the Silvertown gave more non-skid mileage than any of the other tires tested in its own price range. Averaged 19.1% more miles before the tires wore smooth. You'll never know what the word stop really means until you felt the grip of the new Silvertown on a wet, slippery road. For safety's sake, make your next set of tires Goodrich. Spelled G-O-O-D-R-I-C-H. Goodrich Safety Silvertown. Shadow, Lamont Cranston, a man of wealth, a student of science, and a master of other people's minds, devotes his life to righting wrongs, protecting the innocent, and punishing the guilty. Using advanced methods that may ultimately become available to all law enforcement agencies, Cranston is known to the underworld as the Shadow. Never seen, only heard, as haunting to superstitious minds as a ghost, as inevitable as a guilty conscience. The identity of the shadow is known only to his friend and aide, Margot Lane. Today's story, The Firebug. Fire reported at 4th and Chestnut Street. Blaze at 4th and Chestnut. Fire reported at 4th and Chestnut Street. Blaze at 4th and Chestnut Keep back! Keep back of those fire lines! Let me go! Let me go! My baby's in there! I've got to save her! I'm sorry, ma'am. We can't let you in there. You'd be burned to death. Look, Arthur. I've got to get through there. I've got to, I tell you. My brother and sister are in that building. I don't care. Get back! Hey, you! Get back! Stop that guy! Don't let him get in there! Stop him! Now, where's the firebug get this time? Oh, hello, Commissioner Weston. I had a notion this to bring you out. As near as we can check, it's three dead and six badly burned. Oh, that's bad. Any idea how it started? It's the same story as the last six tenement fires, Commissioner. It started in the hallway with an oil-soaked baby carriage. Come on, there's no doubt about it. We're dealing with a pyromaniac. These six tenement houses fires all started in hallways and in an oil-soaked baby carriage. I know. That's what my department's been trying to hammer into your head for the past ten days. What's the matter with your police force? Can't you pick up this crazy fire bug? Well, we've done our best. Rounded up every possible suspect in the city. Question hundreds of them. Well, Commissioner, I'm here to tell you that if something isn't done and done quickly, the city council will have your job and mine too. Yes, I know. Well, right, careful what you say, Governor. Here comes a couple of reporters. Well, listen, it looks like that crazy fire bug's put another one over on you. What's the matter, Commissioner? Can't you find this nut who's running around with a box of matches and a can of kerosene? We're doing everything possible. Yeah, and meanwhile, a couple of dozen poor devils get burned to death. The whole town's scared stiff, wondering what this maniac's going to burn next. Maybe it's time you called in that mysterious friend of yours called the Shadow, Weston. Yeah, why don't you get the Shadow to help you? We'll capture the maniac without the Shadow's help. Hey, look, look out! Look out! Get back there! Get back! Get back there! Back! The walls! They're coming again! You 
No, Lamont. I feel sorry for Commissioner Weston. The newspapers are writing the life out of him. Yes. Listen to this editorial. Enter the shadow. Due to the inability of our police force to curb the wave of incendiarism, dozens of innocent persons in the tenement of our city have died. Weeks have passed, and yet the fiendish criminal responsible for these fires has not been apprehended. It would appear that, again, the people are in need of help from that mysterious figure known only as the shadow. Yes, Margaret, the newspapers are treating Weston and his police force pretty roughly. Paramaniacs are one of the most difficult type of criminals to deal with in the world. Therefore, enter the shadow. Yes, Margot, but this time, if it's humanly possible, I'm going to see that Weston gets the credit for breaking this case, if it can be broken. Is that why we're driving through the tenement section now? Yes, Margot, I've been checking a theory of mine for several days now. Yes, but only as Lamont Cranston, the amateur criminologist. Well, here we are. It's just another tenement house, as far as I can see. Except that it has a fur dealer shop on the ground floor. Wait here for me, Margot. I'm going in there. Won't be long. If you see a meat coat lying around somewhere, you might bring it out with you. <laughs> it might make up for the agony of curiosity you're causing me. Well, I can tell you this much before I go in, Margot. In the last four buildings fired by this pyromaniac, there's been a fur dealer's shop on the ground floor. The man who runs this shop here had his establishment in the last place that went up in flames. Hmm. Well, he certainly moved into another fire, sir. Exactly, Margot, and I'm curious to know why. Good luck. Good luck. Why put your hat over your eyes and roll up your coat collar like that? It's just that in case the shadow has to visit this fur dealer later, there won't be any connection with Lamont Cranston. Wait here, Margot. Don't under any circumstance come in that shop. What can I do for you, Miss? I'm uh, trying to match a piece of fur. You seem to have quite a collection of... I don't sell retail. Who sent you? Uh, didn't you used to have your shop over at Fourth and Chestnut? I moved. Oh, yes. Yes, that's right. The, uh, the building you were in burned down. I hear several people burned to death. Yes, so the paper says. You lost all your stock, I suppose. Were you covered by insurance? Look okay, here, I got no time to talk to you, mister. You better go match your fur someplace else. Uh, wait a minute now, not so fast. I'm... Must be interested in some furs in wholesale lots if the price is right. You'll come back some other time. I ain't got time to talk to you uh, now. You don't seem very anxious to do business. Could it be that you don't care very much about selling furs you carry in stock? What do you mean, mister? Who are you, anyway? What are you coming around here asking a lot of questions for? Trying to make me talk. What do you want? Well, at the moment, I'd like to know why you're so anxious to get rid of me. You're expecting someone. What if I am? It's none of your business to get out of here. If you don't mind, I think I'll just have a little look around. If you haven't got what I want in the way of furs, I won't come back. Nobody asked you to come here in the first place. Hello, right, Manny. Well, I see you're all set up in your new joint. Yeah, I got a customer over here behind the rack. Oh, I see. Copper? I don't know. He said he'd come in here to match some furs. He looked funny to me. Yeah. Listen, Valley. Go out the front door and pull down the blinds. We'll soon find out what he's here for. Okay. We better take him in the back room. Oh, once over a clip at the brass knuckles will do the trick if he won't talk without him. He's right back to there. Where? Yeah. I don't see anybody. Why, well, right in it. Hey. He ain't here. But he was just a couple of minutes ago. I seen him go in between those two racks. Maybe he heard us talking and beat it out the back way. No, he can do that. The door's locked. I got the key in my pocket. And he's got to be here somewhere. He couldn't have gotten out. <laughs> hey, hey, come on. Wait a minute. You hear that? Yeah, you heard it. Came from back there in the corner. Come on. Uh, look out. Maybe he's a cop. Got a gun. No, Varelli. I am not from the police. And I carry no gun. Boss, that boy's wait. He came from the corner. But there's nobody there. Nothing. All right, shut up. There must be somebody there. Come out of there, you, and come out with your hands up or I'll fill you full of lead. <laughs> Things in the shadows are best left. In the shadows, Eggman. Who are you? What are you doing here? What do you want? I'm looking for a man. Two men, perhaps more, who have burned scores of innocent people to death, caused thousands of dollars damage to property, and terrorized the whole city. I think I have found them. He knows. Keep him up, Captain Riley. Yes, I know. You betrayed yourself. Who are you? Come out of there, I swear I'll shoot. I am the Shadow, Hegman. Shadow Hegman? The newspapers for days now, they've been saying the Shadow fellow could find out who set the fires. And now he's here, here in the shop. Shut your mouth, Riley. Well, I'll shut it for you for good. Yes, Hegman. 
A bullet would silence Borelli, but nothing you can do can keep me from reading the thoughts that are racing through your mind. You're caught, and you know it. Reading our thoughts? You're crazy. It can't be done. Yes, it can. I can read your mind. It is making pictures like the writing on a slate. You've given me the motive for these crimes. You're a broker. Sure, that's right. Hegman's a broker. Shut up, Varelli. Yes, Hegman. You write heavy insurance on the stock of men like Varelli. On stock that doesn't exist. You're not reading my mind, Shadow. You're just guessing. You're smart, but you're not smart enough or you wouldn't have walked into this place. And I'm telling you here and now, you'll never walk out. The door's locked. I don't care how much you know. Because you'll never live to tell it. A bullet from that gun won't save you. You've set your last fire. Hey, boss, she knows everything. What are we going to do? I tell you what we're going to do. Morelli, get me that can of kerosene. But it's in the back room, boss. I'm afraid the door... as I tell you, you yellow-livered fool. So I've set my last fire, have I, Shadow? Yes, your last fire. Morelli, don't stand there. Do as I tell you. Get that kerosene. Go on. Hey, but this Shadow, I can't see him. I don't know where he is. Listen, you fool. I've heard about the Shadow. He had some trick of being able to appear in a room without being seen. But he's here, all right. And if he lays a hand on you, if he tries to stop you, grab hold of him, and I'll do the rest. Go on, I tell you. Come on, come on. So you don't work alone, Shadow. You've set a trap for us. Well, you're caught in your own trap. Quick, Riley, get that kerosene. All right, all right, I'll get it. Come on, Andrew, are you in trouble? Why don't you answer, Shadow? I'll deal with you alone, Hegman. Yeah, I'm going to get the police. Before the police can break in here, you'll be burned. Here's the kerosene. Pour it on the floor. Throw some on those fur racks. Hurry up. That girl's gone for the cop. We go out the back way and lock the door, huh? And then this Shadow, he died quick. All right, Shadow. Now you just try to come through this back door, and I'll finish you off with a bullet before the fire can get you. Come on, Burley, that's enough. Get back. Get ready to slam this door the minute I touch a match to this newspaper. You're signing your death warrant, Hegman. No, Shadow, yours. Don't think it can break through the front window and get out because it's covered with steel wire. All right, come on, boss. You should go up quick. Hey, boss, what's that noise? Just a car in the street. Come on. We're getting out. Close the door. Lock it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, is the shadow on the right track? The next few minutes will give the answer. Right now, motorists, remember this. When you're tempted to try squeezing the last thousand miles out of a worn tire, watch out. You may save 50 cents at present tire prices, but who knows? The shadow knows. Suppose you had a skid, a blowout, while hitting it up along some fast, crowded highway. Think what it might cost you in repair bills, doctor bills, hospital bills. Take the shadow's advice. Play safe. Yes, motorist. And the way to play doubly safe is to ride on the new Goodrich Safety Silver Town. Because this new safety sensation is really two great tires combined in one. Outside, every new Silver Town has the lifesaver tread that reduces the danger of skidding as never before. Gives you and your family a new feeling of security no matter how wet the weather. Inside the Silver Town tire, there's the famous Golden Fly protection against high speed blowout that has already saved thousands of lives. Why should you risk your neck through skid or blowout when today you can get life-saving protection against both of these common driving hazards without paying a cent extra? Replace unsafe tread-worn tires with a set of the new Goodrich Safety Silver Town. The tires that give you the skid protection of the sensational lifesaver tread plus golden ply blowout protection at no extra cost. be the police checking up on how my car happened to crash into that first door at the exact moment the fire started. What are you going to tell them, Lamont? I got away in the crowd before anybody had a chance to see me. The police said over the phone that my car was being driven by a young woman. Then they suspect... I don't think so, Margot. I told them the car was stolen. And that makes a criminal out of me, doesn't it? Oh, but you're safe, and that's all that matters. Yes, for once I'm glad you disobeyed my orders, Margot, but now you'd better go in my study and wait. I don't want the police to find you here. All right, Lamont. I hope they don't get suspicious as to what really happened and discover that you are the Neither do I. Oh, good evening, Sergeant. Come in. 
I'd have kept you waiting. That's all right, Mr. Cranston. I've just got a few routine questions to ask you in addition to the information you gave us over the phone. That you, Verrilli? Yeah, quick. Let me in, boss. What'd you find out? Where'd that girl go? I got around to the front like you told me, boss. I see her slip out of the car, and I follow. She get in a taxi, but she don't get away from me. Where is she now? I follow her to where she lives. We get her tonight, if you say so, boss. Perhaps she'll lead us to the shadow. But how do you know for sure the shadow got away? It's in the papers. They put the fire out before it spread upstairs, and now the cops are looking for you as the owner of the first. Hey, look, boss. You say you take care of me if the police get after me. You swore it. Don't worry about the cops. I'll get you out of town in a day or two. First, we got to get the shadow. As long as he's alive, we're both as good as in the death house. Yeah, sure, but how are we going to get him? Throw that girl, you dope. We'll get her and leave a note for this guy Lamont she was calling to before she drove that car into the store. And I'll bet you two to one he's the shadow. When he comes to get her, he'll walk into a trap he won't get out of. Yeah, that's it, boss. We get him here in your place. We make a big fire down here in the cellar and we get rid of both of them, eh? Yeah. Come on. Show me where this girl is. We got to get a hold of her tonight or it may be too late. but I think she's gone now. Okay. She's had plenty of time to get to sleep since that light went out. Go in the window into her room and get her, Varelli. But suppose she wake up. Maybe she's screaming. Not if this gag you put in her mouth quickly enough. It's so with horror for You wait here and help me carry her down the pirate's cave, huh, boss? Yeah, I'll wait right here by the window. While you're getting her, I'll pin this note on the curtain. Now go on, get that window up and get in there. Okay. Now don't bump in anything. Just grab her and slap that gag in her mouth and hold it till the chloroform doesn't stop. All right, I'll get her. You what? <laughs> I came here the minute I got your message. What's wrong? Is Miss Margot ill? Oh, Mr. Cranston, it's worse than that. Mr. Margot, she, she's gone. She's been taken right out of her bed and out of the window. She's been spirited to the way. Well, how do you know? Did you see it happen? Oh, no, no, sir. But, oh, I know. I was in my room and I heard a scream. And I run in here and, and there was the note. A note? Where? Oh, in, in the bedroom there. Into the curtains. Come here, look. See. Heavens, Ellen. When did this happen? Oh, about, about an hour ago, I think. The clock had just struck two. You notified the police? Oh, no, no, sir. I, I didn't dare because I read that note first and, and it said not to call the police or, or Miss Margaret will be killed. Here, here, read it, Mr. Cranston. Oh. oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. You Poor did right in not calling the police, Ellen. They trailed Margot here near the trap she could lead them to me. Oh, what are they going to do to me, James? Or hold, hold her for some ransom No, money? no, no, it isn't that, Ellen. Oh, but Mr. Cranston... I look... can't explain now, but listen, Ellen... If you want to help your mistress, you must do exactly as I say. Oh, yes, yes, but I'll do anything. I'd give my life. I know you would. I just want you to stay here. Don't talk to anyone. Don't tell anyone what's happened as you hear from me. Do you understand? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I understand. Where are you going? I'm going to do exactly as the note says, Ellen. I'm going to find Miss Margot and bring her back with me. If I'm not back in two hours and you haven't heard from me, turn that note over to Commissioner Weston of the police department. Remember that, Ellen. If I'm not back in two hours, take that note to Commissioner Weston. Oh, dear God. Don't let nothing happen to him. Don't let nothing happen. Mm. Yeah. Oh, sir. Have a fine time of night to be calling. Hello? Hello? <laughs> you... How did you get my private number, Shadow? I've had it for a long time. Well, no Weston. Now, what is it this time? I suppose you've caught the firebug. I suppose you're all set to make a monkey out of me and the whole police force. The newspapers have done you and your force a grave injustice, Commissioner. But it is not my doing. So what? Would it be worth the loss of a few hours' sleep if you could trap the firebugs before morning, Commissioner? Now, who are they and where are they? I have an appointment with them within the next hour. I'm finished with them. They're yours. If you're ready to take them. 
With them, you can have the honor and credit of ending their reign of terror, Commissioner. What am I supposed to do? Wait here and twiddle my thumbs? No. Throw a cordon of police around the district bounded by 4th Street and the river, and from Spruce to Medley Square. Why, you're crazy. That'd take half my force. It's worth it. All right. What then? Keep in touch with headquarters. If you've not heard from me, by 4.30, a note will be delivered to you, telling you where to find the firebox and the body of the shadow. <laughs> And you, I'm going to give you one more chance to talk. That makes me talk. I'll never tell you. Oh, well, maybe you'll think different after I've burned your fingers with a few more matches. I won't tell you. I won't. Who is the shadow? Where is he? Talk. Well, this is only a taste of what you'll get. <laughs> you don't like that, eh? Well, talk. Oh, no, I won't tell you. <laughs> hey, listen, boss. Yeah? I ain't going to stay up there in the dock anymore. I'm scared. I don't wait no more for somebody I can't see. Get back up there, really. Get up there and wait till I tell you. You know what? I'll give you something to be scared of. But it's dark. I can't see. All the time in the dark, I keep hearing noises, and sounds. And just now, I think I hear somebody laugh. Oh, somebody, something slammed the door. <laughs> so we meet again. Boss, he's here. The shadow is here. Shut up, you gibbering fool, really. You're he's here, and that's just what I want. Listen, shadow. Don't come near me. I'm warning you. I've got a gun pressed against this girl's head. One false move out of you and I'll pull the trigger. Go on, you. Tell them I'm not bluffing. Oh, Mom, why did you come? They used me to get you here. To make you walk into a death trap. They're going to kill you. They'll kill us both. It's all right, Margot. Maybe we can... Morelli, stand by that door. If the shadow tries to get out, use your knife. Remember, if he gets away, you'll go to the chair. All right, boss. I watch. Oh, Mom, I... I'm sorry. This is... My fault. All my fault. Just a minute, Margot. Now that I'm here, Hegman, what do you want? I just wanted you here, Shadow. That's all. I see. You prepared another trap, another fire trap. You guessed it. And this time the girl won't get you out of it because she'll be right down here in the cellar with you. Come on, boss. Quick, we get out now. Lock the door and start the fire. Here we are, Varelli. Don't open that door till I tell you. Yes, Borelli. Listen to him. Do as Hegman orders you. And you live a few minutes longer. Then you die with a bullet in the back. Uh, who'll do that? Your boss, Hegman. No, no, the boss would not do that. You're lying, Shadow. He plans to kill us because we know too much about him. But you, you, Borelli, know more. Not until you're dead will he be safe. Maybe a few minutes, an hour, day. What do you mean, Shadow? Don't listen to him, Borelli. He's thinking about killing you, Borelli. If I'm not, I'm not going to kill you. You can trust me. You forget I can read Hegman's mind, Borelli. Don't you believe him, Borelli? He's just paying out to get you. But he can read the mind. In the shop, he did it. No, no, I tell you, you're my friend. You know too much about Hegman, Borelli. The Shadow is right. I know too much. Only when I'm dead will you be safe, boss. Two can keep a secret. Only when one is dead, Varelli. When one is dead, Varelli. Listen to me. When one is dead. When one is dead. When one is dead. Now well, listen, Varelli. That's it. When one is dead. Now, Varelli, keep away from me. Put That's that knife away. So don't listen to me. Sit the tight your mind. That's another one of the shadow tricks. No, no, Varelli. Oh, oh. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I meant to kill you, Varelli. I was going to do it the minute we got rid of the shadow and this girl. But I don't need you now. I got them trapped and I'll give you yours now. Here. <laughs> you. You can't. But before I die, I'll get you, boss. Get up. I stab you. I stab you with me, boss. We keep a cigarette. Get him. Come on. Here, let me cut your rope, Margot. <laughs> then get out of this place and go back to the apartment. Get that note from Ellen and destroy it. The secret of a shadow must remain a secret. Come on, come with me, please. There's nothing more can be done here. 
The pilot is just a bit. Yes, Margot. The firebugs have set their last fire. One more thing to be done. What's that? I must get in touch with Commissioner Weston. I promised him I'd give him the credit for capturing the criminals. And he and half the police force of the city are waiting out there in the street. The shadow always keeps his word. <laughs> You have been listening to a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow magazine. <laughs> the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The Shadow knows. <laughs> all the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. <laughs>